r slash twarx chromosomes. From 2002 says. Older men are the worst. These 40 plus men tell me I look like a teen, when they find out I'm not they sexually harass me in a regressive way. They say the most vulgar and disrespectful shit. They stare way too much. I wish they would, frick off. They seem to think all young women want them. One of these bastards said my value is my youth, fertility, and beauty. He said 18 to 21 is a women's prime slash peak, but a man's peak slash prime is 40s and 50s. This guy bashes guys my age and calls them little boys and weak. He believes young women belong with older men. These are never good looking older men, it is always bald and pot bellied older men acting like this what can I do with my appearance to turn older men off. I'm tired of them hitting on me. I have tried baggy clothing, and a masculine style they still, won't leave me alone. Will piercings or tattoos turn them off? Saxomaphone says. When I was 22 my friend group had a 50 something creep really trying hard to pick one of us up at a bar. He approached and tried to talk to a friend of mine, and he said something about beer and my friend goes, AWW that's just what my grandpa says. You look so much like him too. You must miss your grandchildren a lot, if you're trying to hang out with us. From 2002 says. What did the guy say? X925 says. These guys wasted their best years, and don't want to admit it. From 2002 says. They claim 40 and older is their best years, and that 18 to 25 year olds will be attracted to them, and want to date them. Mkm says. There is nothing you can do to turn this kind of older men off. If you look young they'll harass you regardless of how conventionally attractive you are or aren't. It's not about your looks, it's about their assumption you'll be easy to control. When we hit middle age we reflect on what we have and haven't accomplished in life. It's common for men who have accomplished less than they wanted to to seek out younger women who are more likely to be impressed by what little they've achieved. Older men who call younger men boys are always predators. This is pretty much the number one red flag. Happy, secure, well adjusted people want younger people to live their lives having age appropriate experiences with age appropriate people. A man's peak is not in his 40s and 50s. Sperm of older men is less viable than that of younger men. They are more likely to have children with issues and they are more likely to suffer from erectile dysfunction. One of the biggest scams out there is older men getting younger women to believe men peak at middle age. They don't. If anything they are further past their prime than women of the same age as women tend to take better care of themselves. We all get the same wrinkles, but women keep their hair and tend to be more sexual when they are older to do an influx of hormones. Many women divorce after the kids leave and start looking after themselves for the first time. The men they leave flounder. Almost every woman I know who got divorced in her 40s had a major glow up. I've never seen this in a man. Ever. From 2002 says. I had a 50 year old man tell me he is stronger than young men. He said barely legal women are healthy and fertile, but women 30 plus errant, so the same thing would apply to men right. This guy is poor, and living with his mother I'm not impressed by him at all. Sparkle underscore bone says. I'm well past the age where men pull this shit, eventually we all age out, and they leave us the, frick, alone. But this is the advice I give minties and young relatives. Be aggressive. They make you think they are being polite or nice by paying you compliments, and we are socially conditioned to be polite back. It's bullshit. They are harassing you, and they only do it because they think you are powerless and will put up with it. You're not powerless. If you're at work and have to be civil, stare them in the eyes and glare as hard as you can. Ignore their sexist comments, and go straight to business, I asked you what you want to order. Make them explain jokes, and ask them, why they think that's funny. If you're not at work, tell them directly to, frick, off and get loud if they don't. I once got out of a horrible interaction like this at a show but repeating, 
I don't want to talk to you louder and louder until everyone around us was staring. The jerk turned bright red and walked away, they know what they're doing is wrong. r slash twarks chromosomes. I for life says. I won my handy woman badge today. My husband is incredibly capable with any kind of handyman task. Build shelves in our wardrobe. Service our cars. Install a dishwasher. Pretty much any task at home, he can do it. And in our 12 years together he's always seen me as very smart, but not very practical, meaning he thinks I'm great at academic stuff, but a bit hopeless with other stuff. I've always disagreed, because I lived alone for 5 years, and managed most stuff by myself including fixing my washing machine, and making a cage for my son's spiny leaf insects from scratch with very basic tools. Anyway, our home is about 14 years old, and we really needed to replace the toilet seats, they were just getting stained, yellowing, etc. I reminded him, but because he's really busy working his, but off in his business I took on the task. It might sound simple, but it really isn't. There are different shapes of toilet seats, based on the toilet base different sizes, different mechanisms for attachment etc. Bunnings, Australian hardware store, had a great fact sheet, so I got all the measurements together, and determined what kind of fittings I needed. Picked out a seat, but one measurement was a bit off so asked for help to confirm. Once we determined it was all good she congratulated me, because most people come in and buy a seat with no idea and they can't be returned because of hygiene. My husband pointed out that was him, he bought two soft clothes seats without checking, and couldn't fit them. He took over installing the first one, and it was about then, that he realized, that he didn't know, that the fittings were adjustable and the ones he bought, might have fit all along. I was giving him the instructions, so I know I could have done it myself. Now we have a beautiful new soft clothes toilet seat, and I'm installing the second one tomorrow, while he's at work. TL, doctor we may not always look capable, but we can be, just as practical as the best handyman we know, just give us a chance. My handyman husband was impressed and humbled. Edit, a couple of. Master often 0 n 3 says. Now of course you need some proper everyday carry, since you've reminded yourself of your capability. D come on by r slash edc for some ideas. Glorito P says. Hell yeah. We are just as capable. Well done. R slash twarks chromosomes. Fkai says. Lessons I've learned. 1. Red flags mean run, not notice it and keep going. This is the biggest thing I wanted to share. So often I read posts, where people have seen a clear, bright red flag, but continue to pursue the relationship. Just a reminder, that red flags mean GTFO, too. Continually allowing someone to disrespect you is a way of disrespecting yourself. Learn what respect is. Learn to give it to yourself, and learn to expect it. 3. Learn to be happy, and fulfilled on your own. If you're uncomfortable being single, or always searching for your other half, then you're more likely to put up with a partner that doesn't treat you well. Plus, you're not a half, you're a whole person. 4. Beware of gifts with strings attached. Especially if the string attached is an expectation of sex. 5. If you can't talk to your partner about it, then they shouldn't be your partner. This is a huge one, and I'm sure some of you will disagree which is fine, but the kind of relationship I want and believe in is one where I can share myself 100% with a partner. What have you learned? I'd love to learn from all of you too. Lady Zafira says. 6. Constantly wanting to check your phone isn't a sign of love, it's a sign of controlling behavior. 7. Someone that tries to dictate who you talk to isn't a sign of jealousy and love. It's controlling, they probably don't trust you, and they just want to isolate you. Mindless underscore garbage 5545 says. 
Feeling like any time you bring something up an argument ensues is a sign to leave, not unravel the problem. 500 cats typing stuff says. Learning to be a whole person alone is essential. Way too many women put up with toxic relationships because they don't want to be alone. But McNuggets says. I wish your post could be sticky but alas, I only have one upvote. Wolstermichstrison says. Do you know a good book slash resource about self-respect? That's all for this video. Was it good? I know not for I'm a robot. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. This video is the product of an automated process.